promotional consideration paid for by the following. This is awesome! This is awesome! Hello and welcome to you. Cheap Shot Entertainment. This is another quick shot review for you lovely, lovely people out there in the Cheap Shot Nation. I'm your host, the Reverend. I think I've already said that. It's again rather rather late here at Cheap Shot Headquarters and I'm losing track of days because we are you now quarantined and things like that. But we're going to go through a review of Resident Evil Afterlife. It is film number four in the six-part series of films by Doug Paul W.S. Anderson and it was released in 2010. One thing I haven't mentioned on these reviews yet is that the Resident Evil films were produced, well, were, were released by uh, a company called Screen Gems. Now, I could describe Resident Evil as a lot of things. One thing I wouldn't describe them as are screen gems. And they do get progressively worse. Like I say, this is number four. The quicker we get through these reviews, the quicker we can get on with our lives and watch some decent films. Um, it is Easter time. I was looking at watching like an alien series or something, doing a uh, series review on the Alien films, all of them, including Prometheus. But let's get on with Resident Evil. It involves zombies and quarantines and things like that, and a virus. Um, maybe some people had put this in poor taste, but I did have plans of doing this way before the um, CV-19 was a thing. Uh, that being said, I hope you're all staying, staying safe, staying indoors, and not being assholes and going outside. Uh, don't swear a lot on this channel, but there's people still going to have family gatherings and going to the coast. And um, you guys need to check yourself at the door. Anyway, let's get on with the review. It's Resident Evil Afterlife, directed this time by Paul W.S. Anderson and written by the same turd. Um, and it just goes to, goes to show that you can't polish a turd because, yeah... This one's really, really bad. Extinction was bad. This one's really, really bad. Um, okay, this is the official description. While still out to destroy the evil Umbrella Corporation, Alice joins a group of survivors. I thought she did that in the last one. Uh, living in a prison surrounded by, infe by the infected, who also want to relocate to the mysterious but supposedly unharmed safe haven known only as Arcadia. Yes, Arcadia. We've learned anything from zombie movies, from zombie TV programs, and from zombies in general. The whole stigma around them is that when someone says, come here, it's really safe, you probably shouldn't go there. Because it's probably not as safe as they make out. Anyway, so that is the story. She joins another group of survivors. They live in a prison. Um, we get um, get a first introduction to the Resident Evil 4 zombies, the uh, Las Plagas. Las Plagas, Las Plagas. Um, so the zombies have little um, tentacles and things coming out of their mouths. Actually, the CGI is done really well on that one, but um, we get uh, another introduction to the crap CGI lickers. They get a little bit less crap as we go along, and the, they're still pretty cool. The lickers are cool, but they did it really, really badly. And it's <laughs> um, cringe-inducing bad. Uh, Mila Jovovich plays Alice, as usual in these films. Ali Marta makes a return as Chris Redfield. Uh, we get Wentworth Miller of Prison Break fame. So he must be really, really good for this one because he's still got the tattoos, presumably, from that program where they broke out of prison and then went back to prison and broke out of another prison and it got really boring towards the end. Um, but um, let's get on with this one. They're not, well, he was in prison. He was imprisoned inside the prison. So 
So it should be really good at getting out. Anyway, he plays Chris Redfield. So first introduction, Chris Redfield. And then you saw, oh yeah, we'll have that character. And we'll, oh yeah, let's bring in this character here. And we'll just sprinkle that character on there. And we'll make a Resident Evil film. Um, Kim Coates plays Bennett. Uh, Sean Robert plays Albert Wesker, so we get a different Albert Wesker. They look very similar, so I didn't really make any assumptions that they were going to be a different person. Uh, Spencer Lott plays Kmart, a recurring character, uh, reprising her role from Resident Evil Extinction. And um, Boris Kojo plays Luther. Um, we get Sienna Guillory again playing Jill Valentine. And um, yeah, Raymond Oluwunwail, Oluwunwail plays the Axeman. So we get introduced to the Axeman. Now this guy, I don't know how he was created. It would have been nice to sort of see a background story uh, with the Axeman. But like I did with the uh, Nemesis project, the kidnapped the guy at the end of the first one. Um, Alice was falling for him, they kidnap him, they turn him into the um, nemesis, <laughs> there we go, turn him into nemesis and we're supposed to feel something for him, we've got a little bit of a backstory there but I mean this guy, the, the axe man, he looks cool, carrying a big bloody axe, I mean like literally it's a bloody axe and he's obviously been killing people with it um, and he's huge, really, really tall. So how did he get that tall? He looks like a normal human being, just really tall. And he's got a bag over his head and there's nails going through it. So how did the nails get there? Where did they find the big nails? Why did they put them through his face? So many questions about the Axeman. I just don't know where to start. Um, yeah, I suppose that seems pretty cool. Um, Ali Larter, uh, Claire Redfield, takes him down um, in the showers and um, yeah, we just get a carry on and they finally do make it to Arcadia and it turns out that Arcadia is in fact the White House uh, which we never get a mention of again so I'll spoil the ending for you but uh, it's not a great film anyway if you did like it and you disagree with me let me know in the comments section it's always Good to get the chats going, and also we're on social media on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, and I'm going to give this film a unnecessary use of slow motion out of overuse of CGI. Yes, there's a lot of slow motion in this film, um, a lot of it. They must need to pad out the the runtime quite a lot because pretty much every scene is slow motion. And, um, yeah, really overused in this one. And I feel that my reviews, my quick shot reviews on the Resident Evil series are getting longer because I've got more to say, the worse they get. Anyway, you are the Cheap Shot Nation. I've been your host, The Reverend, and I'll see you next time for more Resident Evil, for more quick shot reviews. I watch them so you don't have to. Although the first one's pretty good, I'll keep saying that and I'll defend it to the hill. Well, there you go. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.